Now, I am sure that you are thinking. There is something different about the Fred's voice. And well, you would be right. There is something different. And if you want to sound different as well, stick around to find out how to do this for free and in under 10 minutes. And with that, the intro was done. Defrag wasted no more time in beginning the Splash logo and funky music. What you just heard there was TTS Monster. It is a custom AI text-to-speech for streamers that uses all sorts of different voices that you might recognize from characters in games or TV shows or films. And it's pretty cool. It's also free, so yeah. Let's get started. And to do that, we need to head over to tts.monster and click the get started button. In here, click on the Twitch button and it's gonna log you into the TTS Monster dashboard. Now, if you're a YouTube streamer, don't worry, you can use all this on your YouTube streams as well. You just need a Twitch account to log in. That's the only prerequisite. So on your dashboard here, there's a handful of things. You've got an overlay URL, it says stream elements, but you can also use this for stream labs over the provider section here. There is a TTS guide URL. This is gonna be really useful for your viewers to teach them how to use the TTS monster setup. You have a current plan, which is basic, i.e. free. And what this does is it gives you 300 free AI TTS messages a month. Now there's a difference between the default TTS that this offers and the AI TTS. And I'm gonna explain that now before we go ahead. So if I go over to my guide page here, you can see this is all auto-generated just for your own channel. Everyone has their own unique page. It'll show your pricing for your TTS here. It'll show the voices you've made available down here. Now I was talking about default TTS and AI TTS. Your default TTS is whatever AI voice you choose in here and set as your default. It's as simple as that. What AI TTS is, however, is basically the ability to use multiple TTS voices. You can see here at the top, it says one of the TTS names down here with a colon beside it and a message. And then immediately it changes color into a different name from down here. You can see chills and another message. So you use this formatting to put in multiple voices. So if you wanted to do a TTS where lots of different uh, characters were talking to each other and talking to the streamer, you could do that with the AI TTS. Otherwise, if someone sends something that meets the minimum for the default Brian TTS, you can see it here, it says Brian in inverted commas, it's gonna use the default AI voice that you've set, not the Brian voice. So if you run out of these credits before the end of the month, you don't need to worry because you'll still have whatever voice you've set in default to take care of the rest of the TTS for the month. Hopefully that makes sense. Down here, we have the alert settings and this is basically how the TTS is gonna be activated. You can use it with tips, bits, resubs. It's really up to you. You have a minimum for your default and a minimum for your AI. That's as simple as it gets. And since you know what those both are now, you know what this means. Down here at the bottom, there is a delay. And this is so that you don't clash with the audio in your actual alerts because you're going to use this alongside whatever your Streamlabs or Stream Elements alerts currently are. Below this is just all the voices that we saw over on this page. As you make them available on here and hit save and refresh over here, you're going to see them pop up. So the first thing we want to do is actually connect this to your Streamlabs or your Stream Elements, whichever one you're using your alerts with. In this case, I'm going to do Stream Elements first and then I'll show you Streamlabs. Head to your Stream Elements dashboard and in the top right hand corner click on this icon and click on your name it's going to show you your channel page here and it's going to have this thing here that says show secrets click on that but keep this to yourself because it's it's a secret there's going to be a jwt token right here you just want to highlight all of that make sure you have it all highlighted copy it and head back to your dashboard and you can see in here it says stream elements jwt token that's exactly what we just grabbed Paste that in here and click on that save button. For Streamlabs, it's really straightforward as well. Just click on the drop down menu, select Streamlabs, and then you want to head to your Streamlabs dashboard. Now, over here, right at the bottom, click on settings. And in settings, we want to go to API settings right here. Click on API tokens, and you're going to have a socket API token right here. As soon as you click this, it's going to show it. So do not do this while you're live on stream or at a birthday party or your retirement party, whatever it is. Make sure you're seeing this and only you're seeing this. Head back to the dashboard. This will be selected as Streamlabs and you just paste it in there. It's the same story. Once you've done that, hit save and you're good to go. Now, before we start testing all the signs, we actually want to turn off TTS in our alert providers. 
So we're going to do that for Stream Elements and then Streamlabs. On your Overlays page in Stream Elements, you want to select the alerts package that you're using and hit Edit. I'm using the Amused Alerts from Nerd or Die, and they are pretty good. From here, we want to head to where our settings are, and we want to find our alerts. I have Subscriber Alert here, and if I go into that, scroll right down, I could see TTS settings. Click on that, and just make sure this is unchecked. You want to do this for your subscribers, your tips, and your cheer alerts. And once you've done that, make sure that's all good. Click on save up here. And that's all of the TTS deactivated for your stream elements alerts. For Streamlabs, head to the alert box page. And in here, go to your subscriptions, scroll down here, and you're gonna see a resub message text to speech. Just make sure that's disabled and click save settings. Do the same for your donations. You scroll down text to speech settings and do the same for your bits. Looking good. Let's get back over to our dashboard and let's grab that overlay URL up here by clicking the copy button. So now with OBS opened, I'm going to add a browser source and I'm going to call it TTS Monster. I'm going to paste that URL on here and you don't need to worry about the width or the height because this is only audio based. So that means actually we do want to click this here, the control audio via OBS button. Make sure that's checked. Hit OK. And next, we're going to start testing these alerts. Now you can test them in Streamlabs in your own way. I can't seem to see a way to custom generate a message within Streamlabs, but I can do that in Stream Elements. So if you are testing it in Streamlabs, you can use your recent events, try and find an event where you have met the minimum criteria to use TTS Monster and just click on the message itself and rerun the alert. But I'm gonna do my final test here in Stream Elements. So I'm gonna click on Emulate in my Alerts Overlay, head up the Tip Event in the Custom. I'm gonna type in $10 here. And I'm actually gonna pull the message we have from the examples on the guide page. And I'm gonna paste it in here. There's our original alert and our message. Oh my God, I can't wait to watch another stream. Maybe someday you will finally be good at playing video games. That day will sadly never come. It still hurts, but it works. You can see there it works. And one piece of advice I would give you is if you're setting this up, record the actual testing you do of this and then listen back to it because you can run into audio problems and it's better to find out before you go live. If you cannot hear the TTS, but you can see this bar moving up and down, click on the advanced audio properties and check on the audio monitoring setting. If this is set to off, try monitor only mute output, record that and see how that sounds. If you can hear it in the video, then it's working. If you do this and you can only hear it whenever you're testing it, but not in the video, then try monitor and output. And if you just go straight to that and you're finding it's doubling, then it's gonna be one of those two. You just gotta mess around with it and see which one works. And that's it, no filler, just what you need to know. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you enjoyed the video, like it. It pushes it out to people who haven't seen it. And I will see you guys in whatever next video we make. Until then, bye.